Hey, how's it going YouTube? This is your boy Chosen and welcome to today's discussion video and God damn is it a good day to be a Boruto fan. We not only finally touched Boruto chapter 16 in the anime, but also got a new fire opening and outro. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. That's hot. So in today's discussion video, I want to bring up another theory, and that's if Boruto will end up escaping the predestined fate Momoshiki saw in him. So for those who've seen my past Boruto videos, I've gone on about how I think there could be a chance that the narrative falls off the Hero to Zero storyline, to where Boruto loses everything important to him, including himself. I made a whole video discussing why the possibility of Kawaki being the hero and Boruto being the villain shouldn't be ruled out. So if you want to check it out, it'll be in the description below. I think at this point right now, after completely watching and reading the Boruto anime slash manga, and with Kodachi basically announcing that the Boruto story would eventually reach a dark turn, it's clear to say that after the current arc that's going on in the manga, things are definitely not going to be the same as they once were. The biggest speculation going on right now is that Boruto will end up leaving the village due to the guilt he'll face by whatever happens in the next chapter. From then on, it's kind of early to really give any good predictions on what could possibly happen to Boruto's story, but thanks to a few hints left in the anime, I want to present a second path Boruto's story could take, compared to what I was going on about last week. Now for those who question where the term destiny comes from and why that has anything to do with Boruto, well actually it's clear that it does play a huge part in his story and could be the hidden overall teaching behind his character. So to start we of course need to go all the way back to episode 1 to where Boruto and Kwaki were having their conversation. The theory I came up with last time was that the whole entire dialogue was basically a genjutsu cast out on us by Kodachi, so that he would throw us completely off from guessing what the actual narrative of the story is, and that after Boruto goes off and kills Naruto or Sasuke, he becomes a rogue ninja and Kawaki is the one who ends up staying in Konoha, later revealing when this moment comes up that Kawaki and Boruto's dialogues are actually flipped and it's Boruto now who is controlled by Momoshiki, speaking the words of Kawaki and vice versa. Now let's just say this theory doesn't happen, that's basically the point of today's video. If that whole video I made about Kawaki and Boruto's positions being flipped doesn't come true, I think at that point Boruto's story will then most likely revolve around destiny, and how just because you were chosen to be something by fate doesn't mean you can't change your path with enough effort. The build up to episode 1 could instead be Boruto successfully changing his fate from becoming someone controlled by Momoshiki, as it's confusing on how Ishiki stated Boruto was 80% complete at the age of 12, yet still has control over himself at the age of like 15-16. Boruto at that point could have possibly found a way to control his karma seal, again changing the fate that was bestowed on him to become someone that would eventually be controlled by Momoshiki and destroy the village. As for Kawaki, maybe he was the one who really was on the right path at first, but then unfortunately after the death of someone like Naruto fails to adapt to the real world and believes that the only reason he was born was really to become Ishiki's vessel. Again, touching on the topic of fate, except this time it's the complete opposite to Boruto. He believes that predestined fate cannot be avoided, and this could also have been hinted at a few flashbacks ago between Ishiki and Kawaki. Also, when Amato asks Kawaki if he's grieving over losing the karma seals, he feels utterly useless without it. Again, it's way too early to tie anything together. I have no idea what direction Kishimoto is carrying the story towards. You look at Naruto part 1 and see how expanded the world building was in Shippuden and so many other different things were added on that no one could have predicted. So I can't explain why Kawaki would go down this path exactly, especially after finally being free from Ishiki. The final moment of Kawaki and Ishiki did feel like a final send off between the two. I know some people don't agree with how Ishiki went out, but I do feel like if anyone had to get the last laugh, it definitely had to be Kawaki after all the kids been through. So of course this talk of destiny as of now kind of feels like I just pulled this out of my ass. So I'll now go into the small hints we got in the anime. The first hint, which is a big one, is the entire conversation between Toneri and Boruto. Toneri goes on to say that the Jugon is the Eye of Hope and that Boruto holds the fate of the earth on his shoulders. This does not mean it's guaranteed for Boruto to be the one to save the world. It can happen, but it's up to him to go and fight for it. Again, backing up my theory that Boruto will go down a dark path, but eventually change his fate and find the light again possibly by the help of his eye. Your eye will probably guide you to the light which will dispel darkness. That's a literal quote that basically implied what I just said. Again, this is not something given to Boruto. For all we know, Boruto could fail to make this happen. After all, that's the destiny that Momoshiki saw, not the part where Boruto overcomes his unfortunate fate. It's up to him to find it in himself to overcome the fate life set on him, and with the power of his eye, potentially see the hidden path that is there for him to take. The second hint we have about destiny that was shown to us in the anime was basically the whole Jugo arc, which in my opinion was one of my favorite non-manga arcs in the show, and had one of the best executions in general. The entire arc, we see that unfortunately, Jugo has never came to control his curse mark, and was going berserk, letting loose on everything. He believed that this was his fate in life, and there was no other option 
option for him to change. Of course, as Boruto is a shonen anime, we know that this was not how the arc was going to end. In the final episode of the arc, Boruto goes up against Jugo and hopes to take him out of his curse mark state. Unfortunately for Boruto, it seems that his Rasengan wasn't strong enough in order to knock him out, as we see him approach Boruto with killing intent. Before he's able to reach Boruto, however, we see a white goose who was unable to fly like the rest. <laughs> Funny enough, this goose was shown before throughout the arc. Time again, it kept struggling to fly, but over and over, we kept seeing it prevail and never give up. And Boruto takes note of this just before Jugo attempts to crush him. Near the end, when everything turns out to be okay, we see the goose give out one more attempt as it just keeps trying and fails to give up. Finally, after pushing so hard, it is able to fly with the others properly. Jugo takes note of this and starts to question at the end of the episode that maybe one day, he'll be able to fly too. Implying that one day, maybe he would be able to escape the unfortunate power of the curse mark and truly be free in this world without any shackles holding him back. Which if you look at the teachings of this arc, especially the final episode, it was a really beautiful message and one of the reasons as to why I put this arc up there with the better ones. This whole arc of course wasn't just for Jugo's sake. I believe this arc could also be a major foreshadow of the true telling for Boruto's story. And I think if Boruto's story really is about changing one's destiny, then I think in the future, people who weren't a big fan of this arc will end up changing their minds to it once they realize how this arc really was a bigger part of the story than most realized. I think if Boruto's story really does bring teaching to escaping one destiny and emphasizes on it really well, I think this show has a chance to really redeem itself of the slow pacing from everything up to the pre-vessel arc as a whole and turn out to be a wonderfully written story. One of the reasons as to why people were complaining so much about Boruto's story is because with Naruto, there were a lot of characters you could connect to and seeing them go through real world struggles but overcoming them was really inspiring. I think this kind of storytelling could definitely inspire a lot of people who are in unfortunate situations in their lives to thrive and make use of the current situation they are in. Again, it all depends if it's written well in the time skip, so let's just all hope that Kishimoto delivers, which I think he will. Again, I can't go deeper into it because I don't know what kind of direction the story will take place after this Boroshiki versus Sasuke battle. I know some think it'll be Kawaki, but I don't see how. Knowing that Kawaki is not proficient in using ninjutsu and just lost his karma seal. Like that battle would be an easy wash for Boroshiki, and with Sasuke losing the Rinnegan, I think the intentions there was to make it more of a fair fight. But we'll just have to see in a couple weeks. Anyways guys, thank you all for watching up until this moment. I'd very much appreciate a like, and if you enjoy my Naruto slash Boruto discussion videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. This has been your boy Chosen, and I'll catch you on the next one.